And if we scroll down here, we're looking for job 14 and job 15. So we're gonna scroll over all the way over to our job sheets over here. And we have job 14, which is uh, 186, a thousand and job 15 i'm gonna hold down control which is three first a word from our sponsor well actually these are just items that we picked from the youtube shopping affiliate program but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you these are things that we actually researched purchase and use ourselves Acer 27 inch monitor. I've been using an Acer monitor as my primary monitor for a few years now. This is the first Acer monitor that I have used after having used a series of different brands of monitors in the past. The Acer monitor has been performing well and I'm trusting the Acer brand more and more as I use the monitor. I have a 27 inch monitor, which I think is ideal for what I do, which is of course the screen recording and the editing. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. 14,000 that adds up to 500,000 so 500,000 is the amount that we're going to transfer from work in process to finished goods so I'm going to scroll all the way back over here so both the debit 500,000 to finished goods and the credit credits of 500,000 to work in process that's the transaction let's make this smaller on the taskbar like so and scroll over here and post this out so we're going to post the finished goods here here it is on the trial balance Here's the finished goods on the general ledger. We are on the debit side in U18 uh, equals pointing to that 500,000. That brings the balance up in the debit direction. Then we're looking for work in process. Here it is on the journal entry. Here it is on the trial balance and work in process is right here. We are on the credit side this time, reducing work in process in cell V12 equals and pointing to 500,000, bringing our balance down. Now note that what we did is we brought down the work in process to 260. We're going to have to do something with our backup account now to, in order to in order to back that number up in, in our jobs cost sheets. Because if we go over here to the job cost sheets, we still see the job cost sheets here. We still see them. So we have to indicate in some way on the job cost sheets that hey, that, you know, we transferred these jobs. They're they're no longer in work in process. They shouldn't be included in this number. They shouldn't be in here. So how do we take it out of there? Well, there's different softwares that'll do that. But in this case, we could say, well, you know, this is no longer an open job. We could say that it is now a closed job. Maybe just highlight that the fact that it's now closed like so, and therefore it needs to be removed from the, the yellow area here. So we could say this is, this job is closed. We'll make it green like that. So this should only include the yellow jobs, which are open, indicating that they are open. So this one's open. Maybe this should be yellow too. Okay, so I'm going to double click on that then. That means that, or we, can just we could just delete it. And I'm going to say that the new entry should just be this job. That's all that should be in there. And that means that that now ties out to the work in process. So the green jobs are now closed out. And the, the only open jobs that are being backed up by this cost sheet now are the ones that have not yet been transferred to finished goods being uh, the 260. So we can see that 260 just includes that job. That 260 is what is in work and process. And of course we could see what's in finished uh, goods too. The 500 being in this case, the 186 and uh, the 314 as up to the 500. Okay, and then once we transfer it out of there, I'm gonna say it's, it's shipped. All right, we also see the uh, work in process and the finished goods over here on the trial balance respectively at the 260 and 500. All right, let's make it larger again, back up to 100% on the side, scrolling back over to the left. We are now on the next transaction, which says that we, uh, on 131, record sale of job 14. So we sold job 14 for 380,000. So we are on 131. Okay, so we sold a job. 
Now we can think of the first half of the sale just like any type of sale. We made a sale. What happens when we make a sale? Well, uh, we think, well, is cash affected? In this case, did we sell it for cash? Yeah, we did. So cash is affected. Cash is going up by the one third, by the 380. So cash has a debit balance. We're gonna make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case is another debit. So I'm gonna copy cash. I'm gonna put that up in H13, right click, paste one, two, three. And then we're gonna credit income, or in this case, sales. So this is the actual sale that happened. So we're down here in sales. Uh, sales have credit balances. We're gonna make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which is another credit. Just like any sale, this is just a normal transaction for any type of business where we, we um, generated revenue and got cash for it. We increased cash, we increased the uh, revenue account, cash is being debited, revenue is being credited, and I just did the wrong thing. I'm gonna right click and copy and our revenue account being called sales in this case because we sell stuff and we have the amount of 380. Now a lot of people are going to get confused on the 380. We're saying well how did we come up with the 380 that arbitrary number? Why don't we I mean don't we have to look at the job cost sheet in some way to think about how much uh, we sold it for and notice that we might get the sales price from the job cost sheet meaning we might have a, a, a rule that we're saying hey whatever the cost of the project is we're going to mark it up by 30 percent meaning we might use the job cost sheet to come up with the sales price but the, the cost is what we've been tracking not the sales price the sales price should of course be higher than the cost unless we underbid the job but uh notice that in a lot of problems uh they, they might just give you the sales price and and or they might not even talk about the sales price and just talk about the the movement of the inventory so when we start thinking about the inventory, it's a lot of times it gets confusing because people ignore, we tend to ignore the sales side of things and lose sight of the fact that uh, the sales uh, is gonna be slightly different than what we've been working on. We've been working on tracking the cost the whole time. So we might use the cost in order to come up with the sales price, but many problems might just give you the sales price. And then we have to record the other half of the journal entry, which is similar to the other half of any journal entry if we we uh, were a merchandising company and that is that we have now reduced the inventory meaning our inventory now being the finished inventory because we're not going to sell the stuff that's in process unless someone wants to finish it themselves and we're going to like sell it at a discount or something but otherwise we're probably going to sell the inventory that has been completed and it has a debit balance we're going to make it go down so i'm going to copy that i'm going to skip a line and skip another line to put it on the bottom so we're going to credit that and if we're going to credit the finished goods, then we're going to debit the expense related to us uh, giving up the inventory. That expense is finally called cost of goods sold. So just like in a merchandising company, we're selling the inventory, we're expensing it in the form of cost of goods sold. So I'm going to copy the cost of goods sold. I'm going to paste that in cell H16, right click, paste one, two, three. So we're gonna to have to get this information from, of course, the job cost sheet. So this is the number that's gonna come from the job cost sheet, the reduction in the inventory, and the expensing of the cost of goods sold. So we, we sold job 14. Let's scroll over to our job cost sheet and see what's in uh, job 14. Here it is. I'm gonna say now it's closed. So I'm gonna make it a different color again. Let's make it like blue, maybe cool. blue is closed. So it's no longer here. We're gonna say it's closed or shipped. It's been shipped, meaning it's closed. All right, so now we have it over, over there and the amount in there is the 186. So notice that at this point in time, we're finally gonna expense all this stuff. We're expensing the material, the direct labor and all the overhead, all the rents and stuff that we applied to this particular job. We're expensing at this point in time in the form of cost of goods sold because that's the point in time that it helped us to generate revenue and that's the point in time we expense things under the matching principle which is an accrual principle so 186,000 so we're going to scroll over here 186,000 credit 186,000 also note that these two things basically happen at the same point in time but it's a lot easier most of the time to think of them as two separate journal entries so we're going to think of the sales half cash and sales and then the reduction of inventory and the recording the cost of goods sold as two entries even though they're happening at the same point of time so i'm going to make this smaller back down to 80 we're going to post this out we're going to post cash first scroll over here a bit so here's cash here's cash on the trial balance 
we are in the debit side. So we are in Q13 and point to the cash of the 380, bringing our balance back up to 534. Now we're gonna repost the sale. So here's sales here, here's sales way down here. So it's gonna be way over here in the dark blue, first dark blue in AD. So it's in AD 13. So I'm gonna select equals and go way back over here to the 380 and that's gonna hit enter. And what that does is it increased the sales. So notice that increase of sales, it's represented by a credit that's not a negative number. Net income is now including just that number. So all the stuff that we've done, we haven't recorded any expenses, even though we've paid the utility bill and we've paid uh, certain salaries and whatnot because all that went into our assets up here. So we only have revenue at this time until of course we re report and record the cost of goods sold. So here's the cost of goods sold. Here it is on our income statement. It's gonna be over here, way over here on the uh, general ledger. It's gonna be a debit in AC18 and equals, and we're gonna to point to that 186 and enter. So note that the net income on this transaction is the revenue we got as 380 minus the cost of goods sold, 186. We've got the 194,000. Again, that 186 includes so many things that we've been talking about, right? It's, it's got the direct labor, it's got the uh, direct materials, it's got the overhead. All right, so then we have the uh, finished goods is here, finished goods is here on the trial balance, and finished goods is over here on the general ledger. We are in V19 equals pointing to the 186,000, brings the finished goods down. So now we have in finished goods just the 314. If we scroll over to our jobs, all that's in the finished goods is the 314 now. We still have uh, in open jobs, just job 16 of the six, uh, 260. And in the work in progress, we have the 186. Okay, so then we're gonna have one more thing happen here. So we're gonna make this larger, we're almost done. We're all, we almost have to stop because we have completed this very uh, entertaining problem. So now we're down to adjust for any under appropriated or over appropriate factory overhead. All right, so what are they talking about? So remember, if we if we look at the factory overhead, then we're done with uh, the, the the period here, and uh, we have three thousand negative in factory three thousand credit in factory overhead. What does that mean? Well, if we think of factory overhead kind of like uh, uh, part of inventory, it's part of the uh, work in process and the raw materials, the finished goods and overhead are all the things that kind of we're using to uh, record inventory. The work in process is where we put a bunch of stuff, all the stuff we couldn't apply to the job, and then we applied it to the jobs in the using a, a predetermined rate. Now that predetermined rate is just an estimate. We had to come up with an estimate. An estimate is never going to be perfect. And therefore, in this case, we applied out more to the jobs based on the predetermined rate than we actually expensed or included or debited or increased factory overhead by. So we over applied the factory overhead. Now, there's a couple of ways we can treat that. Usually if we say, hey, that factory overhead is pretty small, we, we were pretty close, 3,000 in relation to the rest of the numbers isn't too far off, then uh, we just wanna make that zero so that when we start over next month, it's, the, it's at zero. We don't wanna start off with 3,000 in it. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to uh, make that go to zero and we're gonna put the difference to cost of goods sold. So this is gonna look kind of like a funny entry. Uh, it could, it, it's gonna go the wrong way, meaning it's gonna, it's gonna be a credit to cost of goods sold, which is unusual because cost of goods sold is an expense basically, and it usually only goes up in the debit direction. But the reasoning be behind this is that, you know, it's just an estimate uh, and the uh, related account on the income statement that will then clear out to retained earnings, so we'll never have to look at it again, is cost of goods sold. And because it's insignificant then, in relation to the other numbers, it's immaterial. Let's just clean it out to the income statement, the related account being cost of goods sold, close it out to retained earnings, and therefore we'll, we won't have to worry about it again when we start the next month over. So uh, idea being that as of the end of the month, 131, we have a credit balance in here because the factory overhead was over applied. We need to make it go down to zero. How do we make something go down? We do the opposite thing to it, which in this case is a debit. So I'm gonna copy that. We're gonna put it on top in cell H19, right click, paste, one, two, three, debit for the 3,000. We're gonna credit something. And again, what are we gonna credit? Ah, we're just gonna plug it into cost of goods sold. 
therefore it'll be closed out and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll never see it again. And so we're going to put it in the cost of goods sold. Notice cost of goods sold has a uh, debit balance. It usually only goes up. You almost never credit cost of goods sold. This is an exception to the rule that we're actually going to credit cost of goods sold. So we're going to copy that. We're going to put that in H20, right click and paste it one, two, three. We're going to make this a little smaller, back down to 80. Scroll back over here. Here's the factory overhead in I-19. Here's the factory overhead down here in, uh, U, in column U, and we're way down here, and we're gonna, we have the credit balance. We have this 3,000 in it. I'm down here in V31, and we're gonna say equals and point to that debit, and what we want to happen is for this 3,000 to hopefully go down to zero. So we've cleaned that out. We're out of, we're out of balance by the 3,000, of course, now. Here's the cost of goods. That's where we're gonna just plug the difference. Here's the cost of goods on the trial balance way over here last count over here on the general ledger so we're going to credit it which is kind of weird but it's okay this is the exception to the rule equals i'm in ad19 pointing to that 3000 and enter so notice that affects net income by by the 3000 there for that adjustment and uh so there there we have it and that's it